Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Scott from the Graduate Apprenticeship team at Edinburgh Napier University, and welcome to our live stream event with Graduate Apprentice alumni from Edinburgh Napier University. As part of Scottish Apprenticeship Week 2023, I'm here to talk about graduate apprenticeships. I'm joined by two of our graduates from the GA programme, Ross, who graduated in 2021, and Claire, who graduated in October 2022. We're going to discuss their experiences on the course, impacts on their careers, and why you should consider applying for a graduate apprenticeship. For those who aren't aware, graduate apprenticeships, or GA for short, give you the chance to earn while you learn, offering you a route to get a university degree while in a paid relevant job role. You would typically spend 80% of your time in the workplace uh, get, and getting hands-on experience in work and 20% of your time studying at university. Tasks that you do in the workplace for your employer can also count towards your degree through work-based learning. For graduate apprenticeships, they're available to Scotland-based applicants over the age of 16 with no maximum age limit. Learning costs are fully funded by the Scottish Funding Council, so you actually pay no tuition fees for the duration of the course. At Edinburgh Napier University, we host more than 450 graduate apprentices across multiple programmes in computing, engineering, building and surveying, and business and management. We've also formed successful working partnerships with, us, with over 150 employers in Scotland, ranging from small to medium enterprises or SME businesses to multinational organizations. Graduate apprenticeships complement our existing portfolio of highly regarded undergraduate programs, which all include work-based learning opportunities in the form of placements, internships, live projects, and other links with industry. But today's focus is graduate apprenticeships. And over the next 30 minutes, I'll be asking Claire and Ross a series of questions about their journey. If you have any questions that you want to ask either of the panelists or myself, um, please add um, your question in the comments section on the, uh, the platform on which you're watching this live stream today, and we'll make sure and uh, answer them as best we can. So we'll start first of all with introductions. So Claire, I'm gonna start with you. Um, can you please tell us a bit more about yourself, the graduate apprenticeship course that you studied and your current job role? Yeah, sure. As Scott previously said, I graduated from university in October last year. I was the first cohort of the construction and built environment um, students and I was on the quantity surveying pathway. I'm currently working for Turner and Townsend based in Edinburgh as a cost manager. And being the, for the first cohort was pretty special. It was nice at the start of um, applying for university. It was the unknown. Um, and within the industry, I think there was a kind of doubt around it as in, you know, this course isn't known, you're going to come out with the same degree that everyone that goes full time comes out of, which you do. Um, and it's enabled me to work on my RACS chartership as well in my final year and hopefully set that this year as well. So it's been great. Fantastic. Yeah. And we'll, and we'll make sure and uh, talk about that a little bit more later as well, Claire. So thank you very much. And um, Ross, the same question to you for you. Just tell us a bit more about yourself. Yeah, definitely no problem. So, oh, sorry, Ross, we can't hear you. I think you were covering your mic or something there. Oh, is that better? Yep, that's a bit better. Amazing, amazing. So, yeah, <laughs> name's uh, Ross Wharton. Uh, graduated in 2021. Uh, I was part of the IT management for business. Um, degree, which was a, an undergraduate honours degree. I um, currently work for an organisation called Aegon, um, and I'm an IT business analyst within that team. Fantastic. Thank you, Ross. And um, I'll just continue with yourself, just talking about your um, your uh, career with Aegon. Um, just looking back at your graduate apprenticeship journey, how do you feel that that's impacted on your career, your prospects and your career trajectory? Yeah, hundred percent. So um, I started uh, at Aegon in 2017 with no corporate experience and and pretty much had left left school. Um, so so I was nice and early in my career, and um, so it was a bit scary jumping right in. Um, and you know, as part of this kind of program, you do kind of get chucked right in to the deep of it. Um, you get real work experience. Um, so I kind of started in my graduate role within Aegon, um, 
four days a week working and then one day a week going to university. And that was all agreed with, with my employer and we, we managed to get a kind of good system working with that. Um, I I would say probably the benefit the course had, um, I was learning stuff practically, but as we all know, when, when you're working, you know, you can get stuck right in the thick of it without really thinking about the wider context. When I started applying some of the stuff I was learning at uni to what I was doing in work, it gave me a lot wider context and I was able to, you know, think think a little bit more critically about the work I was doing um, day to day. So yeah, I think I think the kind of university side had a, a massive impact on my career. Um, and what and just talking about your um, what you learned from uni and applying that to the workplace, what do you feel from the course? Um, you were were you able to apply most of all? Okay, um, I think there's probably two 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 aspects to that question. I think first of all, you've got soft skills that you learn from just being at uni. So you get. For me personally, I got the full kind of uni lifestyle alongside of it. So you've got, you know, m meeting up with, with people and, you know, developing relationships. You've got the time management aspect because it is, it is tough. <laughs> you need to you need to manage your time well between work and between studying and between, um, you know, just general social life. So, you know, you have to be quite disciplined and that, that kind of taught me how to, you know, work essentially and get that those sort of skills um, I, I would say on the other hand you've got your theoretical um, things that I was learning so so my my course in IT the first two years where it was kind of generic IT skills so we've done a few programming courses we've done SQL we've done UX um, alongside a couple of different project management stuff and then and then my third and fourth year at, at, at um, kind of focus more on the business side of IT so it was a lot of um, yeah it, it was a lot of project management and um, yeah that that kind of thing you know project management the more admin side of, of IT so yeah that's that's kind of what I gained out of my, my time. And I think when you're going on to those project management skills those sorts of things in the latter stages of your course those soft skills that you talked about are going to be really important and it's, yeah. it's really interesting actually because um, when I've, I've talked with graduate apprentices current apprentices and alumni of the program those soft skills are, are what comes across and um, more than what a lot of people would think um, on the program and with them um, industry um they are routinely uh revealing that soft skills are, are of paramount importance to them so that is a real benefit of the program so thank you for that ross um, and and claire i'll come on to yourself in terms of um what uh, talking about skill sets again um can you just summarize what you felt with the specific skills that you gained during the time on your program and then how that's impacted your career trajectory yeah, I would definitely say communication and presenting was a really big one for myself. Um, I'd previously been at college and then I'd worked when I was at college. So I started my graduate apprenticeship with, I think it was around three years work experience as a quantity surveyor. Um, and I'd never presented before. And when we started university, a lot of it was presentations, which at the time was very daunting. But as time went on, you learn good presentation skills which I think are fundamental um, for going forward in your career so that was a really good side but it was also a networking side you know you were meeting people who were in similar situations to total different situations too they might just be day one starting their job there was people who'd worked years you know various different companies different places around Scotland as we attended on two-week blocks and um, so as Ross said as well, it's, you know, time management, prioritising um, your workload at work and your university coursework as well. So it was really good in that aspect for myself. Yeah, fantastic. And in terms of um, where you are now in your career versus maybe if you'd um, not gone through the, the graduate apprenticeship programme following your um, previous education, how much do you think it's had um, a positive impact overall, particularly with that soft skills development like presentations and things like that? I would say it's had a significant impact on in my career so far and I think it will continue to do so. Um, 
I'd obviously graduated there last year and with it being the first cohort of construction built environment, I think, you know, there was, as I said before, a little bit of doubt or oh, how can somebody leave university and have X amount of years work experience and a degree. Um, but I think, I hope that I've proved that, that it's a good thing to have. Um, and just for myself, really, it was, I loved being able to be in the office, out on site and then just go to university the two weeks, three times a year. It really suited me. You know, you learn a lot in the office, you learn a lot on site and in university and you can apply both of them together. It just, I think it makes you really all rounded, you know, strong. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and you know, um, I want to actually touch a bit more on the, the study pattern and how you manage your time with that, because um, Claire, you've talked about being in two week blocks at university, whereas Ross, you were on a a one day a week so um, I don't know Claire if uh, in terms of those two week blocks at university and and then going into um, work for the rest of the time how do you feel that worked for you and how did you manage your time with like those two week blocks and independent study perhaps that goes along with that? Yeah and um, personally for myself at the start I found it was a bit difficult it was you know very new it was new to everybody so you were going to university for two weeks and then going back to work, you know, you'd finish up university the second week on the Friday and then you were back to work on the Monday and you'd have coursework to do and deadlines to meet. So I just really, the first term, had to be strict with myself, set dates for myself. I always tried to have courseworks completed before they were due, so I'd have time to read them over, you know, run them past someday, make sure that it made sense. If I had any questions, there was enough time to get them answered, ask them. Um, it was just really, you just have to be strict on yourself, get yourself into the good routine for it, and then you're just used to it. So it becomes a routine and it works. Yeah, yeah. And, and Ross, do you draw parallels from that? Is there anything else that worked for you, particularly with your study programme being one day a week in university, four days a week in work, um, kind of very different study pattern? Yeah, yeah, definitely. You can definitely draw parallels, 100%. Um, I think I, I would say for me, the although so I had four days uh, a week in work and then the one day in uni um, the day in uni was full of lectures and intense learning so you know the time for study was kind of extracurricular outside of work and um, you had to be kind of strict on yourself evening studies or, or, or potentially even weekends um, of course that's not easy but other good things don't come easy right you need to you need to get your head down and, and focus so um yeah you need to be pretty strict on yourself but, um, <laughs> but it's it's um I and mean, i'm pretty harsh on myself anyway to be fair but um yeah it's definitely worth it when you come out of it um with the skills that you come out with um yeah it's definitely impacted my career i think as a just to draw on one of your earlier questions scott in terms of my career i started as a as a graduate apprentice um, and as working in, within my four years at Aegon, doing the degree, I managed to get a promotion within that time at work. So, you know, there is opportunities, although you've got the uni side of things, you've got your foot in the door of, of you know, big employers and um, building relationships in work um, that will actually end up being your career. So, you know, and um, you come out of four years, it's not just the four years work experience, it's knowing and having a, a tr trust and relationship with you know, key people in the business. So, yeah, yeah. I think that's that's a massive part of it, Ross, and really important to highlight that when you're doing a graduate apprenticeship, you are learning skills in university that you can apply into the workplace. You talked about that earlier, but where that also helps, especially with there being work-based learning integrated into the graduate apprenticeship, is that you're constantly developing professionally and there can be career opportunities during the program and not just after it as well. Um, so just before I, I, I move on, um, we've got a couple of questions uh, come in from uh, LinkedIn and um, so if anyone does have any further questions they want to ask please put something in the comments and we'll look to address that in the next uh, 15 minutes or so that we've got remaining um, so first question is um, are international students allowed on the GA program so it is um, a Scotland based program so they're available to Scotland based applicants only so you need to be living and uh, 
working in Scotland or applying for job positions that are um, that are Scotland based. So you would need to be resident in Scotland to uh, to apply for the course. Um, and then a question from uh, Sandy on LinkedIn: Can MBA students apply for a graduate apprenticeship? So. Graduate apprenticeships are offered at sort of undergraduate level. So Ross and Claire would have started in year one undergraduate of a program. Now, strictly speaking, you are eligible to apply for a graduate apprenticeship um, if it's in a different subject area. So probably not say in a business management course because it's in a similar study area. But if you are looking to get into IT or engineering, you would be eligible to apply um, depending on previous um, qualifications and experience before your graduate apprenticeship. But it is worth bearing in mind that these are undergraduate, um, these are undergraduate programs. Um, so it is kind of going into first or second year of an undergrad program. Um, so I'll move on. I see some more questions coming in, but we will be able to cover those a little bit later on. Um, so I, I want to just talk about now about Sort of getting prepared for the, the the world of work through a graduate apprenticeship, and I'm I'm not really going to focus on this sort of now and when you graduate because what's coming through is that you're learning um, skills quite early on in the program. So Claire, if I can just ask you, looking way back to when you started the program, um, was there any? I mean, you talked about presentation skills. Were there other aspects in which the program helped you prepare for work or get experienced in the workplace? And how quickly did you feel that you were able to adjust to that and get comfortable in um, in working through the the graduate apprenticeship program? Yeah, definitely. I think it was um, more the textbook side of it, um, as opposed to you know the technical being in the office, hands on, um, doing the job. It sort of made you more all-rounded, you know, a lot of our lectures were based on contractor side and consultant, so I'm consultant side. So you learn about a bit about both the sides of the construction industry, which was really interesting um, and gave me like a different perspective of what I'm doing. So that was good to see that. And I just think it was really, you know, you could ask a lot of questions and during our lectures. It was a nice group of folk. The lectures were really good and if we had questions we could ask them and it might be questions you know you, you don't particularly want to ask in the workplace um but you had the there was a forum there to ask at university so that was good yeah so it's, it's quite interesting that that you had that 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 extra mechanism of support um on on the program from um academic professionals who have that field expertise as well um yeah i think that added layer of support could certainly be beneficial and was there anything in particular a project or a task that you worked on during the program that you feel had a, a significant impact was there any sort of one or series of pieces of work that you think really had that um positive impact on your professional development yeah, I think it was, well, it was possibly first or second year. Um, we had a project where we had to attend, you know, a site, go and view it, and then write a report on it and how we would deal with the site, site conditions, the costs. And it was the first time for me that I'd, I'd ever done that. Um, and it's something now that I do pretty much daily, you know. So it was really good um, to do that. The other thing was probably the project in third or fourth year that you do. So that was good, you know, you get put into a little design team project. And again, it's something that I'm doing on the daily now. Um, and it was good, you work with different um, disciplines within the industry in it. And just working with different people and how people work differently. I think that's a big lesson to take from it as well that I learned. So that was pretty good. And, and in terms of those, um, how diff how people will work and approaches to work, um, do you think that that was a benefit working with, um, you talked about it earlier, peers from uh, classmates that actually were working in, in other companies and industries? Do you feel that that was something that was um, of particular benefit as well? Yeah, definitely. I think, as I said, it gives you a different perspective, you know, um, I think it's when you're working, you know, you can be very blinkered, you're straight, you know what you're doing every day, but just hearing what other people do and how people do things differently sometimes, it's good to know there's not one way to just do one thing, you can do it different ways and it works. So it was quite good from that aspect of things, yeah. 
Yeah, fantastic. Thank you so much, Claire. And Ross, I'm just going to go through similar questions with yourself again. And um, just from, from your perspective, um, well, well, first of all, just keep on that um, area of peer-to-peer -peer support because you were, of course, working again and on that one day a week and, and some projects with um, people from other industries in the same course, other businesses. Um, how did you feel that was of benefit? Yeah, uh, so I, I was lucky enough that Aegon actually had two uh, graduate apprentices. So uh, me and another guy um, went through the same experience together. He was working on a different team, um, but we were able to, you know, uh, speak pretty much daily uh, on the work that we had on and, and kind of collaborate and, and kind of keep ourselves motivated <laughs> to, to keep cracking on uh, with it. I think outside of, you know, that, that support that I had at Aegon, uh, you know, I was working with, I kind of became good friends with you know five or six different people who were in different industries working in IT. Some had just started, like myself. Some had been there a couple of years, but all around similar ages, and it was really good to be around people with similar mindsets. Um, you know, similar mindsets to to get the head down and keep working, and uh, you know, pretty, pretty similar outlooks on life as well, which was good. So. Um, yeah, I think I think there's a really good support network you can build. Yeah, and I think that um, that similar. You I mean you ha having colleagues that are doing the same courses is, is is great, of of course. But in working across a cohort that is working and studying and managing, trying to balance that time, I'm certain would be of benefit. And um, just looking back at the program, um, I'd ask Claire this question as well. But um, was there anything a specific project or task or series of projects or work that you felt was had the biggest impact um, on your uh, professional development? Yeah, I think uh, there's one that really stands out to me. We've done a project management module. Uh, I think I mentioned that previously in, in our third year, where we essentially got given a scenario and we had to work in a in a group uh, to assign ourselves essentially project roles uh, and start you know, mimicking a, a project scenario and coming up with the uh, project initiation document and then moving through to the aspect where you're ready to hand over to uh, developers you had to have a lot of collaboration skills you know you're working with you you're working in a kind of professional sense of people you get on with outside so you know you're, you're maintaining that relationship but you're also getting an insight into how a project is ran from a theoretical point of view um because again at work it can be hard to get sucked into different uh, ways of doing things and, and it's good get having you know that support from Napier and the kind of academic side to, to understand how things should be done. <laughs> uh, it's good. And you felt that that was something you talked about. You would actually went for a promotion opportunity and, and were successful with that during your course. And you think that was something that perhaps had that um, you know impact from evidencing work as well as even confidence to go for an opportunity like that. Yeah, a hundred percent. If I'm being totally honest, there is no way I would have the job right now without that do without doing this apprenticeship. Um, it's it's quite a challenging area to get into uh, with no experience. So I, I think when yeah, I think the skills I learned from that, alongside the contacts I, I built up at Aegon, um, really really helped me in that in that perspective. Um, yeah. I, I can't recommend it enough. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. And um, yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's so good to hear that the, the positive impact has had. And um, we'll just go on for the last uh, five, six minutes to talk about that um, looking way back to when you applied and then the, the sort of summarizing the impact. So um, we've got a, a question um, from, from LinkedIn again. Um, just a last sort of call as we're going on to the last five minutes. If anyone has any further questions that they want to ask Ross or Claire or indeed myself, please put them in the comments and we will um, address them if we can in the, this last portion of our stream today. Um, so the question that we have from LinkedIn um, is just looking way back and I'll start with yourself Claire. I think you you did talk a little bit about this on your your sort of introduction, but um, why why did you actually decide to to do a graduate apprenticeship? What motivated you to apply? Yeah, so I had um, just finished college um, and completed my HNC, which I done on day release, and I had been working three years as a QS before um, applying for the 
graduate apprenticeship so I really wasn't wanting to go to uni full time or anything like that but I wanted to go and get my degree because I've got aspirations to become a charter surveyor and have to get my degree to become chartered. So I had started looking into options and it was day release full time and it just it scared me to be honest I just didn't really want to do it. I was used to working, comfortable in the environment that I was in, really enjoyed it. And the thought of, you know, stopping work and going studying full time really wasn't for me. And luckily the graduate apprenticeship just, you know, started being advertised around the time I was looking, done my homework on it. Basically sat down with people that I worked with and done a seesaw method, the pros and cons of all. And for me personally, it was the best um, option and the only thing that I, that didn't put me off it, but that I wanted to confirm before I started was that I'd be able to set my APC after it, MRICS APC, if the course was accredited, which it did get a kid RICS accreditation, which was fantastic. So yeah, I just went for it. And as Ross and Millie said, I don't think I'd be in the position I'm in today if I didn't take that leap four years ago, join university and do the graduate apprenticeship. Yeah, and, and I think um, the particularly in a built environment or engineering related course, these um, accreditations that you're going through, chartership are, are quite massive. And it's great that you've been able to do the degree, which is fundamental to those, um, whilst also not having to leave the, the you know leave your job and, and go into an environment that's completely different. I mean, that would require such a sort of upheaval um, of your life, really, to go and do that. But it's great that you've been able to, you, you know, realize the opportunities while still working and developing your your, your skills as well um, and and just when back when you applied and when you were successful and when you joined the course um, looking back at it now um, how how's everything gone in comparison to how you thought it would at the start of your journey on the GA um yeah I think it's when it's been a lot more positive than I thought it was going to be um, you know, I was a school leaver at 16, went to college, I've worked um, and I just, I didn't really see myself as being somebody who would ever go to university, to be honest with you, or somebody that would ever be in the position I'm in just now and, you know, have like aspirations to become chartered and progress my career. So I think from that side of things, it's been very good. It was daunting at the start for me. I wouldn't say I was very academic, but worked very hard in my four years at university and you know, I got myself a first class degree at the end of it, which I was extremely surprised. I think uh, I thought my family and friends were a bit surprising it too. But um, yeah, no, I just worked really, really hard for the four years and the support's there. And I think it's an opportunity. It's fantastic. You know, speaking from somebody within the construction industry, it's great. And I do think the more people that do it, um, the more it'll be recognised within the industry and there'll be no questions around, like, how can somebody have a degree and X amount of years experience and it's it's good. Yeah, it's a very good option, I would say. And and the achievements that you've um you've managed through the course, um, including that first class honours degree that you get at the end of the programme, it is the same qualification as you would get completing a yeah. full time undergrad program. That first class honours is nothing short of an incredible achievement. Um, you know, going through that journey that you've been. So um thank you so much for that, Claire. And Ross, I'm just gonna ask you the, the same question. So way back when you were um first applying, and um, what was it that motivated you to apply for a graduate apprenticeship? Yeah, sure. Uh, so I, hmm, I left school and done a conventional, normal uni degree with another university. Um, and while doing that that course, I was also working part time uh, at a phone company, EE, just doing sales. Um, and as I was kind of going through the mechanism of studying for that degree alongside working, I found that I much preferred the working and practical aspect. I think the sitting down and studying, I really struggled to engage with. And whenever I actually went to work, that's what kind of got me, got me, I don't know, a bit more engaged, a bit more excited. And, and I felt like I was actually learning more from work. <laughs> which is a bit mad so I made the decision to drop out after first year because I knew it just wasn't for me however I knew in my head and I knew I was capable of doing a of doing a uni degree I did not want to miss out on that opportunity and to be completely honest then um, for four months I was I was kind of wondering what I was going to do while working at the phone shop 
and I decided uh, it came up on Facebook uh, the, the marketing for the graduate apprenticeship started looking into it and and you know the aspect of working alongside the the studying uh, just totally appealed to me in the way I work um, you know you it, it keeps you engaged um, with the with the theory that you're learning because you're applying that day to day and they both kind of work so well hand in hand so yeah it, it was if you're looking for an alternative to you know your conventional study i think it i think it's uh, but but you're still wanting a degree i think it's a great opportunity yeah and i think what you highlighted there really is um you know the way in which you learn um can sometimes a lot of people where the way in which they learn will be much better suited to a full-time undergraduate degree but for some it is that more practical component and aspect of things that has that value so the graduate apprenticeship certainly provides uh, a different way of learning a different style of learning that can then benefit some compared to others so it's really good that this way has had that impact for you and um, how's it gone compared to what you how you thought it would um, at the very start yes it, it's gone good it was I, I think when i started um i had i had certain um thoughts about how it would go i, I knew it'd be hard work um i think going through the program you know it it, it does really test you um it, it gives you you know an element of resilience and uh uh you know desire to keep on going and keep on working towards a kind of end goal which you need in life you're like yeah absolutely have to have that quality so that kind of developed that within me and um, i think now that i'm at the end of it i'm i'm super happy that i've done it and um, it's yeah been really fulfilling for me so yeah fantastic and, and the final question um for each of you ross first of all what would be your advice for anyone considering applying to a graduate apprenticeship yeah, I think I think for people concerned applying, I, I think you need to sit down and think about what what's right for you uh, in in the way that you learn. Um, I think you need to be, yeah, you you need you need to sit down and essentially work work out what's right for you. You would need to be prepared to commit to something, but I think I think the the cost versus the benefits is is clear you know you get you get your degree but plus you also get paid a salary so um and it, it, it's uh it's you know it's it's a good salary to start with as well so you can uh yeah there's definitely opportunities in there to, to begin absolutely thank you ross and then um, claire is there anything that you want to add to that in terms of advice that you would give to anyone who's considering applying for a graduate apprenticeship um, no, I would just pretty much say the same as Ross there, you know, just weigh your options up and you've just got to be prepared to work hard and it's four years of hard work and but as Ross said, you get the rewards throughout the four years and after the four years and, you know, hopefully that continues on in your career but I definitely think it is a very good option and um, personally speaking for myself it has been and I would recommend it. Fantastic, thank you so much Claire and in terms of um advice on how and where to apply um if anyone is looking to apply for a graduate apprenticeship you apply for a vacancy with an employer rather than applying directly to the university so we partner with employers who advertise their ga vacancies on the apprenticeships.scot website so www.apprenticeships.scot that's where all participating employers will advertise their graduate apprenticeship opportunities so at the top right of that home page there's a tab find a vacancy filter down to graduate apprenticeships and all of the current um, GA vacancies will be there. Keep an eye out on that website between now and around August time for September starts. And um, hopefully there are positions that you can apply to. You will need a CV, um, which should outline any experience or qualifications that you have. And experience can be, as Ross has said, retail experience um, going into the role. That's of benefit to employers who are looking for those soft skills that we talked about, communication side time management everything like that so go on the apprenticeship scotland website and have a look there for current vacancies for more information on graduate apprenticeships at edinburgh napier university visit at napier.ac.uk slash apprenticeships there's more information on our courses available um information on the program in general and some videos of our more video testimonials of our current students we have our graduation stories from uh, october 2022 
2022, on which Claire has um, is featured as one of our profiles for graduate stories, if you want to know a bit more about her journey. Um, but that is, um, well, all the time and more uh, than we have today. We went a little bit over time, but um, I think that's just testament to um, the engaging conversation and the experiences that Ross and Claire have been through. So I just want to thank both of you so much for your time today and sharing your story with prospective applicants. And hopefully it has had an impact and perhaps even made that decision uh, for some people. So thank you everyone for, uh, for uh, tuning in and thanks to Ross and Claire so much for your time. And um, hopefully we'll see some applications coming through, but thanks again and have a great day. Thanks.